you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Cher here and today we'll be talking all about module bidding in NUS. Today I'm very very excited to share with you about everything I know about bidding for your modules and also how you can actually select your tutorials and swap them later on and just generally speaking about the entire system. So in more detail I'll actually be going through about the different rounds, about how to see your results, about the bidding timetable, about the appeal timetable and everything like that, everything related to bidding for modules and selecting your classes and tutorials will definitely be gone through in this specific video. So there's two bonus resources that you'll be getting for today's video. You'll be getting a schedule for bidding, so this is a very good example for you guys. I use AY 2020-2021 just because the SEM is coming and it's the most relevant one. The second bonus resource is essentially a step-by-step -step visual guide exactly how to do module bidding. So many, many of your questions will be answered here. Do make sure that you watch my previous videos such as everything that you should know about NUS and also my other video about you know modules and your workload and your examinations and etc. because for you guys to bid for your modules, you want to make sure that you've done your homework to ensure that the modules that you want to bid for are modules that you want to take because you feel like you are very interested in them or you score well or they are part of how you can graduate. So make sure to like, comment and subscribe if you're enjoying this entire series and hit the notification bell so that you know when I post the next time. Because in my next episode, I'll be going through with you guys how to build your timetable and I have so many emails asking me how to build that timetable and everything. So I will be going through that with you guys. So don't worry, be patient. It will come out really, really soon. Just make sure that you subscribe so that you know when the video comes out. So that being said, I think we can go straight into the video right now. The slot will be given to the person that bid first. So my biggest advice to you guys is to just be aware of what to do when the bidding rounds open and do not delay your bidding, just really do it immediately. Make sure that you know the dates of every single round opening and make sure you know what you can bid for, what you can't bid for, so you don't waste time when you're actually in the bidding process because the first come first serve is very important over here. So if you're lucky, you'll actually be getting a lot of your modules or all of your modules served to you, but if you're not lucky, you may not get many, many, many of your modules. However, if you are like year four, you get priority, so you're welcome. Something to note is that different people get different priority based on your curriculum needs, based on your seniority, and also based on your module preferences. This is how the school will prioritize who should get that module. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward, but now let me talk to you guys about the bidding rounds themselves. So you know, you have so many rounds going on. You have like round 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B. So many, many, many rounds. It's like a merry-go-round. There are a few rounds available for bidding. You can always check the schedule here. The bidding starts with round 0 to place your advanced bid, followed by round 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 3A, and 3B. Round 1A and round 1B are for returning students. That is, those who have been studying in NUS for more than two semesters. Round 1C onwards are open for all students. Round 1C onwards are open for all students. In round 1C, there are bidding queues in some modules for three different groups. Returning students, new students, or minors and USP first tier modules. That is, each group will have their own quota for a specific module, so each group will compete with their own group. This is some kind of protection for each group, especially for new students who has less bidding points compared to returning students. In round 2, the queues are only for either returning students or new students, whereas in round 3, there is no grouping or bidding queues at all. All students will bid against each other. Moreover, each round has its own specific modules up for bidding. For instance, you can only start bidding for your minor modules in round 1C, whereas bids for ULRs or UEs can be placed from round 2A. Detailed information can be found here. The last thing you have to take note of is that you can only bid for maximum 23 MCs until round 2B. If you want to secure any additional modules, you have to bid from round 3A onwards. Round 1 are basically for your very important modules. So definitely do make sure that when you, you know, bid for your modules for round 1, it's all the important modules that you really, really, really want to take. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about tutorials. So for tutorials, it's just basically a lot more straightforward. You just select your tutorial slots and then the results will come out. And then at the end of everything, 
if you don't like your tutorial slot, you can still swap it, there's no guarantee, but definitely at that time, a lot of students are swapping their tutorial slots based on their confirmed modules that they've got. Just make sure that you're aware that there are tutorial swapping options. So after you've been allocated certain modules, it's time for you to register for your tutorials by balloting. So the allocation of tutorial groups is an exercise that's separate from the allocation of modules. Students should refer to the registration schedule for the dates of the different rounds for tutorial registration. There are three rounds in selecting your tutorials. For each round, students can select and rank 20 preferred tutorial time slots for all the modules that they are enrolled in. However, students must also ensure that there are no timetable clashes between the ranked preferences and his or her existing class schedule. A student may also list fewer than 20 ranked preferences, but this would mean that there are fewer chances for you. If, despite the provision of 20 ranked preferences, the student is still unable and unsuccessful to be allocated the tutorial groups for his or her modules, the student may have to revise his or her preferences and resubmit the list of 20 ranked preferences for future balloting in the next round. You can also add or swap tutorials. So the add or swap process begins after the last round of tutorial balloting. Students without tutorial classes can use this function to add tutorial class as long as there are still vacancies. The add request will be processed at frequent intervals and allocation is on first come first serve basis. If a student has already been successfully allocated a tutorial class but would like to change to another class that is currently full, he or she can post a swap request. The swap request will be processed at frequent intervals and will be effected when there is a corresponding match with another student. Otherwise, the request will be stored in the system until the time that a corresponding match is found. Another way you can do this is by manual walk-ins or registration at departments. Appeal to departments should be filed after the student has tried but failed to secure a suitable tutorial time slot using the above listed mentions. Students should note that they can appeal only for tutorial groups with vacancies. At the end of tutorial registration, a student who is still not enrolled in a tutorial due to timetable clashes may be allowed to drop the module. So a lot of the things in this timetable is pretty self-explanatory but basically you just want to pay attention to when the rounds 0, 1, 2 and 3 open and also when they close and also just pay attention to when the results are released because let's imagine in round 1 you get your results, this will inform you on what modules you need to bid for in round 2. Same again, when you get your results for round 2, then you'll know what to bid for in round 3. So basically just pay attention to those dates, it's all over here. And another thing you want to pay attention to is when you can actually select your tutorials. Most importantly, also get the results for your tutorials and also the dates for swapping your tutorials. These are very, very, very important. Hi everyone, so welcome to this bonus resource where I will be going through with you this step-by-step -step guide to register for your modules, to select your tutorial slots that you desire, and also to swap your tutorial slots. This entire manual has 34 pages, so I'll only be going through the parts that I find the most important. So namely, I'll teach you how to actually get into ModRec, and then I'll teach you how to select your modules, and then submit your module request for non-graduating students. I'll also show you how to select your tutorials, and also show you how to add or swap tutorials, as well as to drop classes or submit appeals. So the first thing you need to do is to actually log into EduRec. So EduRec stands for Education Records System. And after keying in your user ID and your password, you just want to click on Academics and then click on Module Registration. So this is how you actually submit your module request. The first thing you need to do is to click on Select Module Requests and then click on Request for Modules. After that, you just need to key in the number of MCs that you would like to take in this specific semester excluding pre-allocated modules MCs. So after doing that, and after doing all your research, this part should be pretty quick because you just need to search for the modules that you want to be allocated for. Something to note is that if a module search is unsuccessful despite the correct entry, the module might not be offered to you via submit module request function. You may need to contact the module host should you be allowed to select it via submit module request function. Okay, so after keying in the modules that you want, the next step is to actually select, delete and rank your modules which I'll be going through right now. So the key thing that you need to do is that you need to just select your modules and if you wish to actually add more modules, you just need to click on add class and that way you can just add all the modules that you want and repeat the above steps. So the next thing you need to do is to actually click on rank modules 
where you can actually show the system which modules you want to be ranked for and prioritize. And the third thing you need to do is to actually just delete modules that you want to remove. So you just need to click on the remove button. And after adding all the modules that you would like to take for the semester, you just simply need to click on continue. Before that, something to note is that to request for a module, you also might need to give consent to disclose your academic details to the module host approvers who are not in your home department. You can also upload your latest transcript and resume if required. Okay, the last thing you need to do is that you just need to click on submit and then click on OK. And this way it will confirm that you have submitted your module requests. Also, another thing to note is that just make sure that you're doing all this within the scheduled time for you to do it. Okay, so that's it. That's basically how you actually select your modules and also submit your module request. So the next thing to do is to talk about selecting your tutorials. So now I'm going to be going through that. So after going into Edurec, you just need to click on Academics and then click on Select Tutorials or Labs. So very similarly, you just need to view the classes that you have and then select the tutorial time slots that you want. So after selecting them, you'll just click on Continue and this is time for you to rank your tutorial slots. So you can just rank them 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And you can also choose to delete some of the tutorial slots that you have been given. You can also choose to delete some of the tutorials. After all that has been done, you can just click on continue and this will allow you to actually submit your tutorial request. And that's basically how you select your tutorial slots. It's really, really, very, very simple. So now I'll be going through with you how to actually swap your tutorial slots. So it's really not too complicated. So let me just go through with you. Again, you just need to go to edurec and then you need to just click on academics and then click on add or swap tutorial slots. If you have already been allocated a tutorial slot but you wish to change to another class, this is where you can actually request to swap tutorials. You just want to click on request to swap and then you want to select the slot that you want. And once you've done that, you just need to click on the submit button. And automatically, the system will be looking for matches for you and they will update you if there is someone who wants to swap the tutorial slot with you. Simply, you just need to click yes to proceed. Okay, now we're going through with you how to actually drop your classes. So again, it's very, very simple. You just need to go to Edurec, to Academics, and then click on Drop Classes. And then you just need to select, you know, the classes that you wish to drop. And then you just click on it, and then you click Drop Classes. And basically, that's it. You also may want to just go to View My Classes, just to make sure that everything's correct and okay. And last but not least, I'll be going through with you how to submit your appeals or your inquiries. So you just need to actually go into Edurec, click on Academics, and then click on Submit Appeals slash Inquiries. And then you may want to add your appeal or inquiry over here. So over here under Appeal Type, you just want to make sure that you select the correct drop-down menu function. So for instance, if you're having some trouble because you would like to change your lecture class, or you want to change your tutorial class, or perhaps you want to actually drop a specific lesson, or you're facing some issues, or let's say that you're unable to fulfill some requisites or unable to secure a module, just select the appropriate option and then click on Submit. And once you click on Submit, your submitted appeal will appear in the main page of Submit Appeals and Inquiries with the status reflected. Over here, you can actually just click on View Details and basically you can actually just um, see the comments from the admin when they do update it. Yep, and that's it. And that's how you actually select and submit your module request, your tutorial request, as well as to swap your tutorials, to also appeal for certain modules and also to drop certain modules. Last but not least, this is actually a very, very helpful page because it actually shows you the hotline as well as the email of ModRec for you to contact if you have further inquiries. So over here, the email is just modreg at nus.edu.sg or you can basically call them at 65165860. So thank you so much for listening to the bonus resource. I really, really hope that this run-through has helped you. Again, there's so many other awesome resources within this PDF itself. So I've linked it down below as well as in my NUS Personal Academic Module Planning Sheet. So you can have full access to this document. So thank you so much for watching today's video all about bidding for modules. I know this is a very huge question mark in many many freshly hits and it was also very confusing to me at first but don't worry I feel like after you've watched this video everything should be super clear and spot on and if you have any other questions feel free to comment down in the comment section below and again thank you so much for joining this episode. Do make sure you like, comment, subscribe and also turn on your notification bell because in my next episode I'll be going through with you guys how to build your timetable. So that being said, thank you so much for watching and I really hope that you have an awesome university life.